All right, hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris from Dream Media. Got a brand new episode for you today. Uh, behind me, we're in Katy, Texas. We're doing an install uh, with Cameron over at Insane AV out here in the Houston market. Uh, we're doing an install of this full-on uh, Focal 300 7.2.4 system. You guys are gonna love it. I actually walked this space a couple months ago to, uh, to basically design the space with the customer. As soon as you guys can, get us involved. We'd be happy to help. And it's really gonna pay off in this space back here. You guys will see that in a minute. But I'm gonna jump into all that. We're gonna do the install. We're gonna do it right after the intro. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out the space real quick. So this is the space that we're talking about. If you guys remember, I did a uh, video shoot of this area. Um, way back in, I think it was December, to be honest. It could be actually November. Um, but this is a 14 by 18 room. The ceiling's kind of sloped up at the top there. And uh, I guess from right to the ground to the this little ledge, I would expect that to be nine feet. And then this looks like it's, you know, another foot and a half, maybe two feet, so 11 feet right there. But uh, the space is pretty coming together pretty nicely. Cameron and, uh, over at Insane AV has been here roughly an hour. He knew the dimensions of this, so a lot of the, 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 rough, the rough cuts were done before the job, so it makes it a lot easier whenever they come out. And again, you're paying for you know, their experience whenever they come out and do these jobs. It's not necessarily how long it takes. But, uh, but that, 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 that's coming together very nicely. Let me show you guys the, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys the gear over here. So we're starting out with a uh, Marantz 8012. The customer already had an 8012 that he bought uh, previously, and then he wanted to incorporate it into a system. So again, guys, you don't have to buy everything from us. We would appreciate if you did, but if you guys have gear that you need to repurpose, we're happy to, to help out, try to fit it into your system. So what we have here, uh, Marantz 8012, 13 channel processor right there, and this is a 7.2 correction, that is 11 channel process, or 11 channel ABR. This is a 7.2.4 uh, Dolby Atmos Focal 300 series system. So we're using the Focal 300 series in-wall sixes LCRs up front with the Flax drivers. Man, it's so cool. And then we have for the walls, we have the IW sixes. And then for the ceilings, we have the IC eights. So we're using um, SB3000s for the subwoofers. We're using two of those in the room. We have a couple different ter uh, termination points. We have one back there in the corner, and then we have another one right up here up front. So that's gonna help out with that. Let's see, what else? So the customer decided to go with Wattbox to protect everything. So we have both of those for the subs, and then we have one for the projector. So the projector's right here, JVC RS3000. You guys know I love the JVC RS correction. RS2000. <laughs> you guys know I love the JVC projectors. These things just perform, and you, to be honest, you really can't go wrong with, with any of those, especially with the, 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 the theater optimizer feature that they have in there right now. The customer decided to go with the 140 inch AT screen. So basically these speakers that I was just talking about are going behind the, the screen. So this is built out to help, um, to help optimize that to, to even happen because you wouldn't necessarily need all this, but right here, there is, this is an exterior wall. It's like a quadruple stud, and there's no way that we could have notched that to, to put the speaker in there right up front to have it left and right. So what we're doing is we're building this box, bringing the screen out so that you have a little bit of room and also a little bit of wiggle room for the actual speaker so that it doesn't interfere with the screen itself and jiggle the screen whenever, you know, the voice happens or the explosion happens up front. So that's the reason for this back box. Usually it's not necessary, but in this particular scenario, that's what we had to work with. So this is a 140 inch Slate 1.2 Zero Edge Pro screen, and it's gonna be right over here. And this was basically used, we, we could have gone bigger based on the throw distance that the customer had, but we decided to go smaller based on uh, you know budget constraints as well as you know the limitations of a 2000. You know you, you can get a great big screen, but you want you you might not have the best experience possible. So we erred on the side of um, erred on the side of caution. Basically, got a 140 inch AT screen because you do lose a little bit of light whenever you do the AT as well. So I think that is roughly it. Showed you guys all the gear. Oh well. He didn't get the Valencias from us, but he bought uh, the Valencia seats. We have three, three of those, or actually four of them. Looks like he's gonna have one row of seating and he wants to do an additional little kind of like a uh, bench bar behind there to, uh, to, for another place for sitting as well. Cause he has the space for this stuff. So it just makes sense to use it. We also have the back boxes 
for the Focal speakers. So these are the fire cans. If you want those, it'll help out the acoustics as well. We're not necessarily sure if we're gonna be using those as the end walls or the end ceilings. That will be determined in just a little bit. But we have these things in the space. The guys are here rocking and rolling. I'm taking up a little bit too much time because now they're on a break to, uh, <laughs> to complete this job. So I will continue to update you guys as we finish it up. Thanks for watching. All right, so checking back in. Cameron already has the, I guess the frame out, the build out. What is this, the frame? I Framing? Shadow box. I, I say shadow box. Yeah, so this is the shadow box done, well, technically, for the, the front stage. This is gonna be MDF that's going over the front of it. So, um, you know, in all essence, this is basically making this the drywall. Cause usually in, in wall speakers, you cut out the drywall and then you put the speaker in there. So since we're doing, we're building this box, building it out, you know, to get it off the screen or to off the wall. Because again, there's that triple stud right here. That's the whole reason, or quadruple stud. That's the whole reason why we couldn't just put this thing sideways and then recess it into the wall, cut the drywall. Because this is an exterior wall, load bearing. You don't want to mess with that. I mean, you don't want your, your wall falling down just because you can have a speaker in there or just so you can't put a speaker in there. So this is, what is this, half inch MDF? Yeah, it's just half inch. Yeah, half inch MDF. So basically what we're doing is we're measuring um, one third up the screen, and then that's basically where he's gonna be putting the uh, tweeter, so, or the, the center of the, the speaker mass, the box, as it would be. And then uh, we're gonna cut this out with the jigsaw and then put the speaker in there. Basically exactly the same copy and paste like it would be, you know, drywall. You know, trace out the template, give it a cut, and then put the speaker in there. Move on to the next one, copy and paste two more times. And the other thing I wanted to say too is the reason why the shadow box is going to be eight inches out is because we're because it's a microperf screen. You know, I, uh, Blake from Screen Innovations said that you know four inches from the based the face. on the size of the speaker to the screen will give us enough breathe breathing room from the actual speaker to the micro perforations. And so the box is gonna be, you know, uh, you know, about seven and a half out, and then the screen will be probably about another inch away from that as well. But, uh, so we're gonna have about four inches from the front of the speaker to the screen, and that should give us enough um, air. Dispersion. To, yeah, disperse through the micro perf. Yeah. So that's basically where we're at right now. We will continue to update you as we complete the job. Well, we, I, I mean, I'm just helping holding the flashlight and screwing in some stuff, but uh, Cameron's doing the, the main job here. But update you in a minute. All right guys, so checking back in, this is day two. Um, if, if you're looking back here, things look a little different. So let's just go ahead and show you real quick what, uh, what's, what's been completed in the last day or so. So the frame's in, we basically wanted to get this frame in there for the screen and then uh, kicked out you know, from, from the back wall just to give these speakers, these front stage, a little bit of room to breathe. So um, again, so what they did is they built that, this big border frame around there and then they kind of uh, built these boxes on top of the of the drywall. The reason doing that is because typically, you know, your in, in wall speakers will go in the wall, right? So that would be this right here. This is MDF. This is two by four right here. So um, the reason why we couldn't do that is because there's a huge quadruple stud going from the bottom all the way up to the top, right? This is an exterior wall. Obviously it's load bearing, so you don't wanna go ahead and chip that away. Um, so you know, what we did is we just built this out and designed this entire thing to kick it off the wall and also give yourself a little bit of room to breathe for the speakers so that whenever you have your acoustically transparent screen, it doesn't vibrate and shake the screen. So typically you need a little bit of space to do that as well. So that's basically that, that's been put in. Uh, we got the, the boxes nice and sealed up. The tweeters are roughly one third the way up the, the, the the, the screen itself, so that's gonna be really nice for dispersion and a little more for immersion as well. So uh, if you've ever had speakers behind the screen, it's a lot better 
thin speakers, you know, to the left, to the right, and to the bottom of the screen. It really just clues you in and it really just draws you into the, the movie itself. So that was basically the, des the design for that. We got everything nice and painted to match the room. This is kind of like a uh, black type of, well, it almost looks like chocolate to be honest, uh, type of paint, flat. We have the paint coming out to roughly here, all the way up, and then this rest of the room is gonna be gray. So that's basically what they did. We got the Focal 300 in walls up here in the front, identical, one, two, three. What's up? The homer just came in. And then Cameron has been hard at work. I was stuck in KD traffic trying to get back here on the country roads. So he actually installed the in-wall speakers already. We got one here and we got one right back here. He's working on, actually he just completed that one while I was talking about this video. Right back there, last one's going back here. So um, again, with, with these jobs, you can sit there and try to plan it out all day long, but the um, installer, or not, not the installer, but the, um, the builder basically put these things in the, the wrong placement. Obviously you would want these dead centered in the column. The builder put it off to the side. So we're gonna get that uh, you know patched and drywalled at a later date. Same thing back here. Uh, we got the, the rears in there as well. These are the Focal 300 in-wall sixes. Last one we have to do is right back here. And then we're gonna be starting on the in ceiling speakers, hanging the projector as well as um, hanging the projector screen. So that is a 140 inch Slate 1.2 acoustically transparent zero edge pro screen without the backlit LED kit. I think the customer does wanna add some LEDs uh, in the future, but we're gonna get hard at work starting right now. Man, it's a lot better than those hand drywall saw days, huh? <laughs> All right, well, it looks like uh, just very simple. What you do is if you guys have never done um, an in-wall speaker setup before, it's very, very simple. All you do is include it in the box. They're gonna have a template for you. So I'm not sure if there's still one in here. Uh, no, no, okay, well, trust us. There's a template <laughs> included in the wall or in, in your kit, ah, I found it. So this is gonna be the template, right? Cut out template, easily displayed right there. You just stick this right on the wall. You can even put a thumbtack in there to help you out. It would put a little pressure on it, trace it out with a, a pen or pencil, as most people do, and then um, just go to work. So you can use a handsaw, which are very inexpensive, think like 15 bucks or something, or you can use one of these fancy electric ones. But uh, you know, you really don't know what's in the wall until you start cutting into it. So like Cameron, just, you, you just saw, he basically tried to um, cut this one out and then there was a little bit of a stud in the way so he kind of just kicked it over just a little bit. So that was basically the, the reason for that. And if you guys ever do paint your room and the guys don't take off the, the plates, this is you know kind of a little of a cheat to help you do minimal touch-ups on your job. Get a razor, straight edge, and then you just cut it out or etch it out and then you just take it out from there or take off the plate. So behind that plate, if you guys have never seen this stuff, this is very common in your house to have a plate, right? It's either gonna be white or you know painted over. So these are pre-wired locations. So when you guys call us, you know, we ask, you know, how many pre-wired locations do you have? Usually this will tell you. There's gonna be a plate here. Sometimes there's coax. Sometimes there's Ethernet. Uh, usually Ethernet's gonna be tipped and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know already finished out. But this is a dead giveaway that you're gonna have a pre-wired location right there. If you ever you know question it, just Take a screwdriver to it, pop it out, and if it looks like speaker wire, then you probably got speaker wire. And if you guys do have a chance, always ask your builder or whoever wires your low voltage. Just add a couple extra feet. I mean, it's cheap. Just throw, just just have them throw it in there. It uh, it'll help you out for all kinds of different you know uh, scenarios to where if you need to move the speaker like we're doing right now, you can do that as well. Or you know uh, if if you want to change them to a different location, you can do that as well. But it's very, very simple. Once you get it where you need it to be, where your hole's cut out, you're just gonna strip back the wire. I think Cameron's gonna use his uh, catapult. <laughs> this quickly... Okay, so he's gonna use the old school one. Well, I can peel back. 
So use some wire crimpers, wire strippers, my fault, and just strip some wire. It's real easy. Once you expose the bare wire, you're going to affix that directly to the terminals. Usually there's going to be some push terminals on the back of these speakers. Nice and easy. Where is the actual speaker? It's right here. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's getting a little claustrophobic in here. The customer decided to put all of his new toys in one area and we're doing this install and we're bumping into stuff. So um, usually as the day progresses, there's less and less boxes in here. Make it a little easier for you. And if you guys need to, if you wanna test this out in your space, these are available online. They're readily available. Like you can find the dimensions of them, print them out, and then basically trace in your own space, you know, if these things will physically fit. If you guys are coming into a house that has already had, you know, some speakers in there from before, then that's an easy way to figure out if, if these holes that are already existing in the house that you just bought will fit the speakers that you wanna buy. So with these 300 series, you just kick out these dog legs, they're spring loaded, and this is the cool part, it's just so easy. You put it into the wall and it just snaps. So you don't, you don't even need any tools to snap these things in there. Hold on. Do over. See, it's just that easy. And the last thing you're gonna do is just make sure that it's nice and level. And then what's also a cool thing that Cameron's been doing in this space is obviously, you know, he's taking care of the extra drywall dust and fingerprints and, and, and mudges, smudges. There's but still gonna be a little touch yeah, yeah, yeah. But like what he's doing is he's putting on the grills and he's putting on the painted, the painter grills for the front stage. Cause you know, we're kicking around some drywall dust and you don't want that to be on your brand new fancy system. So I think that's a cool little touch that he's done um, for this area. And then there you go. That's basically the end product. So everything's nice and connected. Just check and level one last time. But it's as simple as that. So again, like I was talking about, customer is going to get this area right here, you know, the rest of these panels um, to have it 100% perfect. He's gonna, he actually said that he can do this and just patch these, get it painted real quick. But typically guys, there's gonna be some type of drywall repair in, into your system. One way or the other, it's usually pretty cheap and it takes you know just a little bit of time to do it. But uh, but have realistic expectations whenever things things happen in your house. You know, it's just part of the job. So we're gonna keep updating you guys. It looks like the speakers are in right now. I think the next step is to do the end ceilings and then we'll start mounting the projector and then building the screen. So we'll update you in a minute. All right, so it looks like we're unboxing the Strong Fine Adjust Mount. You guys know we love this one. You can get it available in black or white. Typically, we just get them in black because we're gonna be using this with either a Sony, a JVC, something like that, something big and heavy. Handles up to 40 pounds, has those micro adjustments right there on the front. And I mean, it's very, very low profile. So check out these micro adjustments. This is the reason to get this thing. If you guys have ever used a projector mount and have not used these quick little adjustments, little teeth in there make all these finite little adjustments in there makes it perfect. Because typically what you're gonna have to do is you have a standard uh, projector mount and they're screwed, yeah, a screwdriver, right? So you unscrew it, you kind of make an adjustment, and then by the time you go back to screw it, it usually kicks back out, <laughs> back to the wrong area that you didn't want to do in the first place. So this makes it really, really easy. It saves you time and effort and really gets you dialed in for those ultra short throw bezel or ultra, ultra short bezels or small bezels like they're doing these days. So with the Zero Edge Pro, which has a half inch border, that is the reason why you want to have that because you don't want to have any keystone or anything like that or you know any spill spill off on the, uh, the on the wall and that's basically the reason for that so long story short grab one of these if you guys can um, cameron has already finished up most of the speaker install i think we have two left right now but the plan is is to mount the projector and do the screen before we do the uh the last set of 
in ceiling speakers right here. So again, if you guys can't see, this is kind of a dark room, so the contour may not show up very well on camera, but uh, it's, it's an odd shaped room. So we have that kind of little ledge back there. It kind of juts straight up. The entire roof slopes down towards this exterior back wall right here. And then on the sides, you see that it kind of kinks in again. So that is the pre-wired location for that set of um, front Atmos speakers. And it's just basically copy and paste over here. So again, we can work with pretty much any room. Um, no room is perfectly ideal uh, to get this stuff, whether, uh, um, you know, pretty much preset. You, if, if you custom build your house, I'm sure you can get it perfect 100%. But for, for this space, I think it's going to work out very, very well. Besides that, I think I forgot to let you know about this little guy right in here. So this is going to be the tributary HDMI cable, and um, we're really we're really making a, a sorted effort to switch, you know, all, all of the new uh, home theaters that we're doing to tributary cables. We really believe in them. Um, I use them personally in my home theater, and I think that it makes all the difference. So we're using a tributary cable going from the pre-wired location, which is right here via Smurf tube all the way back to the home run, which is in the front of the room. I've already tipped these for um, banana plugs. So we're just going the extra step here. Uh, again, we're out here in Katy, Texas, just doing all this stuff. But Cameron's finishing up this part right here. I will show you guys as we up, or as, as we finish this projector install. Okay. So let's just show you this real quick. This is the tributary. This is a 15 meter Vega, right? So this is one of their premium type of cables. So this one, um, it comes, it's powered, right? So let's just show you. Comes in a nice roll, protects the cable itself. I mean, a lot of these things, whenever you get them, you know, they come <laughs> in, in plastic bags. I think this is a nice, nice touch that they go the extra step to make this happen. Protects the cable and this is, you know, a, a little more costly, but you definitely get a, a boost in performance out of this nice cable right here. So I'm going to, let's just unroll this real quick. So again, these are directional since this is active cabling. So this shows that this is the display. And as you can see right here, you see the Vega AOC active optic cable is which I'm pretty sure that that stands for. And this is a full 4K HDMI cable. You can see here that you can either use a dongle and attach it to your wall, wall outlet, or you can just use the power supply on the USB. So that's basically how you're gonna be using this one. But Cameron is up there right now, and in the plate, as you can see in there, there's a string in the Smurf tube. And we were just having a discussion. We don't really know why it's called Smurf tube. I, I think the ones I saw before, they used to be blue. Now they're almost always orange. So who knows? I never watched the show that much when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but he's up there and he's fishing out that uh, that line real quick. We're going to attach one end of this. Obviously, it's directional, so you want to make sure that you don't get it backwards. I know that a lot of you guys, they uh, you, you call up, you, you just spend all your money on your, your fancy new projector, and you're like, Chris, what's going on, man? This thing don't work. And I always, my, my reply always is to go to the HDMI, read what's on there, and see if it says display or if it says source. Typically, that's the that's always the problem um, that 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 I find uh, with, with these projectors not working. So, active cables or even directional cables, that stuff matters. One last thing that they include in the box is you'll see here is that this was kind of just shoved right in this hole. It comes with this little guy. It's a little plastic protector. It's a little casing. You can basically disconnect this right from there. Hope this is in focus and then you basically mate this in there like that close it up now you can fish it through the smurf tube or your walls without getting any gunk or or stuff in the actual hdmi itself so i think that is a really cool touch that they do all right so we're getting this thing nice and wrapped up real quick like i just showed you guys that little protector that they put on the hdmi uh, we basically just protected it, and now we're going to pull this thing through to its final resting place. So I want you to make sure that these... Okay, so you're doing both at the same time? Okay. So we're doing an HDMI and an Ethernet run all at the same time. So I'm going to help with this part. Just 
get the wires so that they're together uh -huh. and feed them smoothly together. Okay, good. Okay, get it into the tube. Yeah, uh, okay. Hang on a second. Okay, go ahead. Uh, pull the ammo, try one more time. Okay, let go. Yeah, buddy! You got it? Got a little back and forth. Oh, cool. So we got a little extra over here, too. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. All right, right on. So it's just right there at the last little kink. Okay. All right, so. You put these smart tubes in there and you expect it to go 100% perfectly, but again, this stuff does have bends in it and typically whenever you do do the taping, you will find that there's a little longer than usual. So, you know, you just got to keep fighting it. Well, not really fighting it, but keep working it until it goes through. Uh, trust the process. These things are in there for a reason and uh, typically you don't have to jump up in the attic and figure all that stuff out. But we got the Ethernet cable in there as well as the HDMI, active HDMI. And now we're going on to mounting the projector bracket as well as the projector itself. So hang on. Yep, that's wood. And that's how you do it. That's why I like watching Cameron work. Whenever it takes two screws, he puts in four screws just to make sure that that sucker ain't coming down. I mean, uh, it's just that added a little extra of security that I, I just really like the way Cameron does, does work over here. Add in Insane AV, one of Dream Media's preferred installers out here in the Houston market. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Check out going the extra mile. He had a little extra paint on his brush from yesterday that he kept in his Ziploc baggie. And now he's making it to where, you know, the plates are different sizes. Obviously, if you're looking at an electrical plate and then a pass-through plate, they're different sizes. So you will have a little bit of touch-up work to do if you decide to change them up. So we're going to be touching up a little bit of paint here, finishing up this projector install. Okay, so let's get this JVC projector out of the box. I haven't, uh... I haven't published this video yet, but this customer was gracious enough to um, to allow us to use this as the shootout for the Sony 715 versus the JVC RS2000, as well as at my personal uh, space with the JVC RS2000 versus the JVC RS3000. So now we're gonna get this thing out of the box. I'm gonna lift it up. Can you uh, flip over the box? <clears throat> You turn out like you always do. Hi, good. There you go. Okay. So, we just need to put the projector mount on it, huh? Yep. Alrighty. So, let's get this thing flipped. All right guys, so as you'll notice, there are several different fasteners included in this kit. So with the JVC projectors, you're gonna wanna use the, uh, the short, uh, not the shorter ones, but the skinnier ones. So there are different sizes and different pitches that go with different projectors. This is a universal mount, so this isn't necessarily made specifically for JVC. But the way we like to do it is we like to have the arrows facing towards the back of the projector and I'm using the longest screws in there that are the skinniest, or the skinnier versions. So that's basically that. Other than, other than that, you basically get it centered in where you need it. Start your pilot holes in there as it would be. 
and then just start screwing it down. Again, you wanna make sure that it's nice and flush. There isn't really any twisting in there. And these come with these Allen screws. What are the ones called whenever they have the center? I think it's just a, like security uh, hex. Okay, so security hex as it would be. Whatever it is, basically what it is, it's, it's an Allen key with a divot in there to accept the fastener. I'm guessing the reason why they do it is just to make sure that you're getting the right size per se on here versus just using any old Allen key. But that's nice and secured. I got the screwdriver. So make sure that these are all cinched up at the end because you want to be able to move them as you're tightening it down. And you don't have to over torque these things. I mean, like, to be honest, no one's going to be hanging from this anyway. And this stuff doesn't go anywhere once it's up. So I think now it's just a matter of marrying them together. And then there's some set screws in the, the mount itself. We have to set those and then we'll get this in there. This little latch right here makes it to where it locks whenever you put it in that you can't push it all the way off. So we're gonna get this thing up there. I have to get up on the top. You got it? Got it. All right, now give this top part a push. I can't give it the other okay. side. Yeah. All core right there. <laughs> All right, get that top part a push. There you go. I gotta get reset. Hang on. Hang I'm on. I'm just holding. Hang on. Push it back. I can't. All right, hold it there. I can't. I can't. Oh. Relax. Okay. Chill. Chill. There we go. All right, perfect. Yeah. What? It's good. Okay. We're live. So usually what I like to do is I like to get it to where it'll just naturally hang. So there isn't really any angle to the dangle. And then you put the set screws in there. Here's the four set screws and your Allen key. Behind the scenes. Oh, my light's on? Oh man. What's wrong? Did a little bit of work and I am sweating. It, it actually warmed up big time in here. And then as you go up there, Ooh, yeah, I was sweating when I was doing those speaker holes there. You know what, while I got that wet brush, I should touch up that plate for you at least. I get it all. Yeah. Nah, man, I mean. I mean, it, it will take me like one minute. Yeah, we're, we're here, might as well. As soon as I get access to that corner again. But uh, we're starting to empty out the room. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he has a pretty pretty decent stack of boxes out there. That means progress. Busting out the cell phone. So we got the projector up there mounted and then I went ahead and just taped it real quick. You know, just to finish it out real nice. We have an, an accessory ethernet cable ran up here. All the set screws are in. If you guys don't know what the set screws in, you'll see them front and center right there. So you have four of these on the unit itself just to keep it protected from falling down. Got the Vega HDMI cable right back here. And I went ahead and taped, oh, if I don't fall down, I went ahead and taped his screws, or his, uh, his Allen keys that he's gonna need for the mount, as well as the set screws right here, right up to the top, so the customer won't ever, won't ever uh, lose them. But this is the view of the room as it stands right now. Man, I'm a little out of breath after lifting, lifting this projector. But uh, we have these in-ceiling speakers to do left. The front's already tapped and ready to go. Now we gotta build uh, the screen and put the speakers in and then uh, it's time to make some noise. So let's keep updating you as we finish it up. All right, so let's check this out. We are getting the in-ceiling front Atmos speaker put in there. And this is a 300 series from Focal. So basically what you do is you line up the red lines right there where it says lock, and then you turn it clockwise. And then it's done. So it's nice and easy like that. That is the 300. It's easy for the guy standing at the bottom of the ladder. Hey, take it easy. So <laughs> we just installed this one right here. This one's already done as well as this one right back here. And if you guys haven't seen already, 
let's let's just show you this right up front. So this is what comes in the package, right? So you're gonna have your speaker grill, which is cool. But you know, a lot of the times these have this little. I guess it's kind of like uh, what is this like felt or something? What Anyways, is velvet. What is that velvet? But this is like acoustically transparent. You would just peel off this little back, this little backing, and you basically stick it behind this one. So what I've noticed a lot of the times, and the reason why you do this is that so that you don't see your speakers. Uh, so like if you have these in the front of the room, you have reflections like that. That's the main reason for this. I've noticed a lot of the time speaker companies basically just put it where it's on one piece so that whenever you do want to change the color of these, it's really, really hard to do it because you have to take so much time and effort with it. But as you can see, you can see through this thing real easy. So it's easier to paint for sure. So again, these are white right here. I think that the customer said that he wants to get these colored, uh, color matched to the rest of the room so that, you know, it, these speakers that are in wall speakers that you're not tripping over, you just, you don't see them. They just in, uh, kind of are just invisible to the rest of the room. So that's the main reason for this right here. So, <laughs> so it looks like all, <laughs> Keep it clean as hey, you go. yeah, clean as you go. It's, it's the easiest, easiest practice. So we have all the speakers in the speakers are ready to go full seven dot two dot uh, four Focal 300 series. These are the ones with the flax, uh, flax um, drivers on them. Just check them out. Looks super cool. So pro tip, if you guys didn't know how they get this little uh, kind of pattern in them, they use linen as the last little uh, step. So that's what gives them that little shape, that cross hatch. But box is in, we're gonna unbox the um, AVR. I'll get working on that one. We'll get these lines toned out and then we'll finish off with the last subwoofer. And then now we're on to the screen. So the screen has to be built 140 inch, 140 inch screen innovations, um, acoustically transparent slate screen so let's uh let's keep working all right so what's included in a 140 inch zero edge pro box is you have your zero edge pro frame and then you have the borders as well as your box of hardware and then standing up back there in the back is going to be your screen and your black um, backing for the projector itself so let me just put this down real quick show you what's included in this box real quick. And these are quality controlled so that you know they're sealed, obviously from the factory. So you have a couple different brackets in here. You have your little plate as well. So you can show off to everyone and all your friends will know that, uh, that you got yourself an SI screen. So this is magnetic, it'll just sit on, on the bottom of the frame once it's installed. And then you have a couple different brackets in here. So all these are gonna go in the corners. So let's just show you that real quick. So these are different sizes too, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just check this out. Yep, so these are the, the big old fat borders right here. These are the skinnier borders. So these matter where you stick them in the grand scheme of things in here. Here's the last fat one. You have black gloves. So if you wanna glove up, you don't wanna get any of your fingerprints on this thing. Two of your mounting plates. This is a very simple system. There's a tract in there and you basically just hang it on there. You really can't mess it up and you don't have to worry about your kids bumping it. It's gonna fall down or anything like that. Mounting hardware in which in this case, we're gonna be using our own. And then you have some clamps. That is roughly it in here. You also have a couple of spare parts and some, uh, some fasteners. That's included in the box. You can check out the inventory right here. Basically just someone checks it off and then they even sign it to make sure that stuff's put in the box. So your very first step is going to put out, set out the frame. So you're gonna set out the side, side pieces as well as the top and bottom. Since this one doesn't have the back LED kit on it, I don't think that it matters which one's top or bottom. <laughs> you're gonna to wanna to fix the sides all together. And that's what we were talking about right here with these brackets. So again, the brackets matter. We'll show you all that in just a little bit, but uh, I, this isn't really easy to film, so I'll probably just pop back in with some updates after it's done. Yeah. 
What's up? She's not in circle. <laughs> you remember that? Living color? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two, two roll. snaps in a Z formation. <laughs> a circle and back snap. Come on. Nice. What corner? Inside? Yeah. One, three, one. You good? Yep. Ready? Yeah. My hand's in. Mine's in. I'm coming my way a bit. I'm going your way a bit. <laughs> and that's it. That well, now we're, we're going to center it. Alright. Oh. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> Dang, dude. Oh man, you excited? That looks so cool. I'm very excited. Oh my god, you're like banging on the money right now. I, I like, I like, I like the kick off of the, the wall. Like that looks, that looks nice. Yeah. yeah. It's like the little thing, wires and threads and measures. Oh man, we didn't get that on there. Oh well. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like that's gonna happen again. <laughs> Well, I think we are just about wrapping up here. There's just a few extra things to do. We're gonna finish off the uh, full-on calibration of the system. You guys know that whenever I come out to a space, I like to put my personal touch on it. So I have my DB meter here. I'm basically gonna verify what Odyssey did, go through the calibration, make sure that all the crossovers are done right, all the speakers are set to small versus you know set to large like it usually likes to put them. It doesn't really matter how physically big your, your speakers are. You really shouldn't put them on large um, unless you know you're, you're, you're you're really going to have some some full range speakers and you're not really worried about having a sub it kind of just messes everything up but uh yeah room's done here it looks like we have the 140 inch um zero edge pro slate 1.2 gain acoustically transparent screen let's show you the real quick up close of that right so you can see here and this is artifact i mean even the wife whenever i showed her a picture of the room she's like hey why does it look like it has waves and stuff in it <laughs> the screen doesn't have waves in it it's just the way these little uh, sconces kind of project light onto the screen itself so that's that's basically what, what what that is but the zero edge pro the customer wanted to install their own uh, set of led lights behind there so that's coming later on i think that's going to look really really cool especially since we uh, built out this custom box back here from the wall and again the reason why we did that i've probably explained it three or four times already throughout this video is just that for this particular room right here this is an exterior wall right up and down uh, there they had a quadruple stud so they had two by four stacked 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 and to put a speaker in there it just wouldn't work so um, you you really couldn't cut the drywall it'd be cocked to the side one way or the other and it wouldn't give you a realistic experience so that's the reason why you know we went the, went the extra mile to do this and build out the box itself so the room is uh, design wise it was painted so we have a nice um, black here flat black from Sherwin Williams it runs all the way up the column as you see right here and then the rest of the room uh, besides the ceiling because the ceiling is the same color as the black in front is going to be kind of like a, a bronze type of color what'd you say it was urbane. urbane bronze is what it's called so we have the Focal 300 series throughout LCR in behind the screen over here we have the Focal 300s again those are the in-wall sixes. Cameron's over here just doing a quick little touch-up of paint, going the extra mile for you guys. And then we have the in-wall uh, sixes in the back. So, I mean, again, on camera, 
the way it looks is it looks like these are a little too low. It really isn't. So don't worry about that. I mean, the, the, the way that we've, we've heard the sound in here, all the tweeters are lined up and that's a really, really good way of doing in things as well. So we have all of those in there. Above, we have the in-wall eights. So these are the Focal Series 300s, IW8s, and that's what you're gonna be using for your Atmos. So this is a full-on 7.2.4 system. The dot two is taken care of by these SVS subs. These are the SB3000s. Um, we have everything protected with um, Wattbox and Tributary. So back here, we have a little Tributary single gang um, outlet that we've been selling a ton of on the channel. You guys know that we like protecting all of our gear. We also have another one up here protecting the projector. The projection system is the JVC RS2000. Again, big shout out to the customer for actually allowing us to use this one in our shootout video. This one was actually used in the 715 video, the Sony 715 versus the JVC RS2000. So I think besides the HDMI cable, which is tributaries, that is going to cover out the room. Customers supply their own uh, SR8012 from uh, Marantz. So this is a full on 11 channels right out of the box. Um, ABR. He does. He just moved in, like straight up. <laughs> like he, he he got the keys and he's like, guys, how soon can you get in there? So he just moved in. He doesn't have his um, his uh, entertainment stand just yet. So again, you guys have seen this several several times on the channel. Whenever we just use the box for the AVR, because you know we just don't want to put it on the ground. So he has that Apple TV as a source. He has an Xbox as a source as well. And then we have the last SB3000 up front. So this isn't part of the video at all, but I am gonna be doing a quick little uh, unboxing and um, comparison of the JVC or the <laughs> SVS 3000 micro uh, against the standard one over there. So I'm gonna show you guys that in a, a little bit. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. But other than that, I think the last thing to do is to finish off the final calibration, give you guys a quick demo, but I will do a full on dedicated demo video, you know, a little bit later on. So if you guys wanna check that one out, that one's gonna be a little more in depth than this specific video. This was a long install, right? So <laughs> you're, you're not paying for the time that we're spending at your place. You're paying for the quality of work that's, uh, that's going into it. So this was a long install. We didn't want to end things off before, you know, we would be personally happy having this stuff in our space. So um, that's about it. I'm gonna show you guys the demo, but really appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys want any of this stuff done to your house, this is in the Houston market. We're out in Katy, Texas right now. I have my man right here, Cameron over at Insane AV. He was the lead on this install right here. He's running away from the camera. No, but, if you, <laughs> but if you guys want any of this type of work done at your place and you guys are in the Houston area, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll leave our number right down below on the screen. And uh, if you guys would like anything home theater related, hi-fi related, two channel, home theater, whatever it is, give us a call. We'd be happy to earn your business. But I'm in on this video here. You guys can check out that demo. I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, so I figured why, might as well, you know, chime in here real quick. I know you guys are gonna comment with this stuff in the, the, the comment section anyway. The customer is going to change out the plates as well as the outlets to full on black so that everything was gonna be nice and taken care of. He's also gonna be getting a um, surge protector back here. Um, he's just using this one in the meantime. And then uh, we will have all these things painted, these grills. I mean, this isn't how we leave things. And like I was talking about, camera was just back there doing some touch up paint for the customer as well. So once all this stuff is finished, you know, maybe I will come back and show you the full on, you know, finished product, but this is what we're working with right now. So don't worry about, you know, the rest of the stuff, you know, you keyboard warriors are like, oh, I don't know why you guys didn't do this. It's, it's coming. Don't worry about it. So uh, we, we, we definitely go the extra mile for you guys and we're on your side and we'd be happy to, uh, to help you out. But that's it. And you wait like everybody else, pal. What the hell is that? Obstruction ahead, obstruction ahead. Damn it, all units divert down on the lower fifth. I repeat, exit down. Lower fifth, we'll be like turkeys on Thanksgiving now.
now.